Welcome back to part two. This is about, we're talking, we're just having a general chat about obesity, in particular amongst women over 40 in the UK. Um, if you've not watched part one, then take a look on our channel and you'll find part one, which follow, this is part two. Okay, so <laughs> we so we are now going to be talking about, in the first part, we talked about diet, exercise, socioeconomic factors, and now we've got uh, psychological factors. So psychological factors that are also responsible, presumably, or is thought to be responsible for people being overweight or just, you know, just basically putting too much weight on and not feeling good. And these include stress, depression, yeah. and other mental health issues. Yeah. So, um, did, just uh, we mentioned last week, didn't we, that that something like just this enormous number of people on antidepressants as well. Amazing number of people on antidepressants. But I, my personal take on that is that a lot of that is a drug. I mean, this is I, you know, my opinion, but I think the drug companies are pushing the pills a little bit as well. Oh, not... Yeah, I mean, without doubt, that is um, that is a factor, but. Um, also, you know, I think that it's been an easy thing for the GPs to do. However, now they are starting to uh, prescribe, um, like prescribe, like social prescribing, it's called. So they're, they're, they might prescribe you for exercise because they know the benefits now of exercise and getting out and walking and stuff like that far out way. Um, taking a pill because that doesn't actually solve your problem because going might, for a walk hey eh? nothing like going for a walk it, it really does make a difference i mean i go walking um as you know mountains and stuff and yeah. it, the feeling that you get that when you've achieved it doesn't have to be a mountain just to get out in the in the uh, in nature it yeah. makes it, it it's overwhelmingly good for you um, blows off the cobwebs as my absolutely you know, some people have never ever seen or been on a walk in the countryside, and that's really that's a shame, isn't it? Um, yeah. But, so, so the but the the, the depression. Yeah. Do you think? I mean, I, 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 for you people don't know, I've been deep into the rabbit hole of diet, and um, I think also that diet and what you eat affects your mood. Yeah. Have you ever noticed? Have you ever noticed some like you, you've eaten something like the night before? So maybe something different, something you've not had before. Does this ever happen to you? It's happened to me, honestly, right? That I've eaten something that are perhaps it's had ginger in it, or it's had something in it, or some. Sometimes it happens when I go for Asian food when when there's some spices, something that I've not had in there before, and I wake up the next morning, and I'll somehow feel different. I might feel more calm i might feel more energetic i might feel just good i might have slept well i might have you know s something was different and 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 i'm not saying this happens all the time but certainly sometimes from time to time i think oh what did i order last night uh, um you know and it might have been a been to uh, i had a, um, a lentil dish and they put on all these spices and it and, and it affected my mood so well, if I, you're putting, so if we're feeding ourselves with bloody donuts, what's oh, yeah, that yeah. doing it, to it our makes mental you feel health? Like, but, but if you ever have had fish and chips, I mean, I don't eat fish and chips. I don't eat fish and chips, and there's a reason for that, because when I've ate them, they're that stodgy. Yeah, uh, yeah. They just sit in my stomach, and I feel full, and I feel like, my, I just feel horrible when I've eaten them. I just feel horrible when I'm eat, eating them. My, they my don't look like, but... My fish and chip epiphany happened age 24 in the lorry i was a lorry driver 24 got some fish and chips for lunch and i'd been eating them and tuning in the radio uh and then like five minutes later all the fat had like dried on the radio and the radio was covered in fat and i looked at the radio and i thought oh my god that was just a little bit of fat on my fingers from the fish and chips you know yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was yeah. like my fish and chip epiphany moment. I thought, no. Right. Like, I, had, I, had, I had them for years. I, I mean, like, um, 
actually, I tell a lie, I had some chips that someone brought me about, I'd say about three months ago, and I said to him, oh, brought me chips, because I were at his, um, my friend's house, and he says, yeah, brought you chips, and I went, oh, I don't usually eat them, and he says, oh, I've got them, you now, and actually, because I'd not had them for literally years, yeah. it was the nicest bag of yeah. chips I'd had, but I really appreciated them. Sure. But, um, you know, I'm not saying don't have them, but you've got to be aware of what you're putting in and, you know. But it makes you wonder, doesn't it, we're looking at these psychological factors, stress, depression and mental health. I wonder how much of that is linked to diet as well. That, you know, yeah. that it comes back to diet and, oh, and exercise. Diet is a massive factor in diet. It's, everything is a massive factor. It's a whole, like, bubble of what you've got to do. Yeah, if you can yeah. do both, it makes a huge difference. If you can improve both areas. What you put in is basically, it's like a fuel, a tank of fuel in a car. If you put the wrong fuel in your car, it won't work. So if you put diesel in a petrol car, it won't work. Same analogy, in there. Yeah. So I guess what they're saying here, or what the suggestion is, that if you've if you're feeling stressed, you you, you people smoke, don't they? Because they're feeling stressed, they'll get mm -hmm. a fag on. If if they're, they're saying the suggestion here is, if you're stressed or depressed, you're more likely to not exercise and not eat well. That's basically what they're trying to say. I think here. Yeah. yeah, I think. Well, I think that that is it. That is the fact that you feel. You feel rubbish, so why not shovel a load of rubbish in? That, and that's Just get get that twelve pack of donuts as you walk into the supermarket. Yeah, get them and then feel absolutely shit after you eat them. <laughs> and yeah. that is it, isn't it? Because let's face it, I could be sat here. I I I'm no different to anyone else. I mean, my our dad is mm. certainly not the slimmest man you'll ever see in your life. Mm. No. It definitely, and he never has been. Well, he probably was when he was twenty. But <clears> he, he has made, you know, he used to eat like a three box of Jaffa cakes just all in one go, yeah. just to prove he could. You know, this was this is this is it. If he, if there was a, a, a box of Bakewell uh, buns, he'd eat the lot. I mean, yeah. he, he would shovel them down. So we are certainly not from. Um, no, we didn't, we didn't have a good role model. We didn't have a good role model. No, we definitely didn't. And, you know, <laughs> I mean, like, you know, it's just but something the, but we're on, we're on, way. We're on, so, so yeah, the, 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 but the, the psychological factor here is that if you're feeling down, you're more likely to yeah. put comfort food into it. I suppose that's, that's, that's the yeah. expression. Yeah. Isn't it? yeah. Yeah. So next on the list, we've got women over 40 going through hormonal hormonal changes well yeah this is where i'd like to beg to differ here because i am one of them women at the moment and yeah you can feel like it's look in anything in life i feel i personally feel we can have excuses um and i i feel that that is just another one that would can be an excuse because um i know a few women at the minute all of whom i run with or do fitness with and they're certainly not and they're all going through menopause and they're certainly not putting on weight through menopause because they're they're eating the proper foods and doing what they should be so um yeah i could cause a bit of controversy on that one i don't know but i don't believe that menopause should have any impact on whether you are um, overweight or slim, I don't. Right. Okay. So that's your strong view on 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 yeah. menopause. Yeah, and my other strong view on the menopause is if you, you are you... feeling rubbish. I know food and drink, and also um, exercise can help. But if you are feeling rubbish and you're doing all the things you should be, then HRT from the doctors every time. Get yourself on it, and I do think that. Uh, right. You know, the, the, there are things that you should, um, they're there for a reason and you shouldn't suffer if you don't need to. Like having an headache, why bother when you can take a paracetamol? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, the thing is, like, paracetamols are great. If you've got a banging headache, why would you sit there and suffer with it when you can take paracetamol? That is, that is what medication, I mean, medication is a, a brilliant thing, isn't it? But it's how it's used and what it's used for 
Um, and yeah. Okay. I mean, I could cause so, that. All right. So next, else, next but... on our next on. So you know, one of one of the our, our Vitality Crew um, membership or what we do is Joanne. Joanne does uh, a daily workout every day, and I also run a uh, plant based diet. Or a, uh, it's called the Vitality Crew, and it's about opening our minds to dietary change. Basically, that's what it is. Um, but Moving on to the next thing on this list here is um, under causes. Oh, that's what I was going to say about the, the 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 menopause thing. So, our the whole our whole program is based on helping women over the age of forty, mm -hmm. and most of the women who are on our membership are probably even a little bit older, probably over forty five. Yeah. I would say in general. Yeah, uh, and. So it's like a community and everybody's going through the same thing. Yeah. So that that's that's what I wanted to say. So it's yeah. you've got a good community where you can exchange and everybody understands. Yeah, and good communication. So thing. everyone's journey is different. Like with everything, everyone's journey is different. Mm. You know, what, what one works for one doesn't work for another. So, yeah. So next is genetics. It says some people may be genetically predisposed to gain weight more easily than others. I think that's true. There is truth in that. that there I is. think people are definitely either uh, – there is. I don't think there's I, – I, I wouldn't doubt that for a moment. No, I don't think I, – I no, I absolutely believe that because we've got two sides of a family, if you think about it. So in our family, in our bubble, there's my mum, who's really slim, isn't she? Mom, yeah. really slim, never really put on weight. She's always been slim, and that's how she's been. There's our other brother, Mick, really mm. slim. You've been the same, though, haven't you, Alan? You've been the more same. More or less. Yeah, my, my weight's more or less been constant all of my adult life. Yeah, yeah. whereas my Although weight... I think I'm obviously carrying more... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but my weight would... It, I really have to watch what I... Mm. I really have to think about what I put in. I really do because I can put on weight really easily. And that's yeah. probably why I do so much exercise. Whereas um, I do know that uh, Scott, my husband, doesn't put, he can eat, honestly, anything he wants. Trust me, he mm. can eat biscuits, anything he wanted. And he never puts on weight. He just doesn't put on weight. So we are well, saying there are, genetic, I agree with that. there are genetic factors, but it's still a little bit of an excuse in a way. There are things you can do about it. And you're a perfect example of that. So what you're saying yeah. is, Joanne, is basically you could easily be massively bigger than you are now Massive if you life. fell for the whole donut, walked into the supermarket, loaded up on donuts. Yeah. I'd be huge. And didn't exercise. And, yeah. yeah. There's, there's no doubt about it. There is no doubt about it. I cannot, because people say to me, and it really irritates me, but you're all right. You can eat what you want. Well, I can I eat what I want, or is it because of what I do that I can? I don't. And when I'm eating what I want, what they perceive as what I want, if they looked at what I'm eating, it's actually healthy for you. So I don't sit there and eat ten Mars bars a day and say, "Yeah, I can eat what I want," because I certainly can't. I'd, I'd be huge. Okay, so we're, we're getting to the end of this next part two section. So. Maybe this is more uh, so health risks. So yeah, why do we? I mean, it's fairly obvious, but I think we should mention them anyway. Or maybe it's not that obvious. So what are the health risks involved with being overweight and obese? Well, it, the list is endless. endless. I mean, Absolutely. basic, basically every single chronic disease. So that means yeah. chronic disease are things like diabetes. diabetes, high blood pressure, cancer, heart yeah. disease. Uh, Park literally every single modern a disease that you're linked to, to is 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 in some way linked to being overweight and yeah. obese. Yeah. Uh, and given given that so many of us are like that, it's like um, it should be massive in motivation, really. To I mean, we can take our lives into our own hands, can't we? Because when we, if we start to improve our diet and we start to move a little bit more, we start to lose weight, our mental health improves, we start to look better, we start to feel better. Um, 
And who would have done that? Who would no, have but, done uh, that? Uh, uh, but at the same time, instantly, we're lowering our risk for heart disease, for cancer, yeah. for type 2 diabetes, for high blood pressure, for yeah. falling down the stairs, for losing our balance, for breaking our bones, for everything. 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 It's like literally everything. And, and you know, that's, that's, our, that's our goal, isn't it, John, to try to encourage people to, let's say, motivate or inspire people to, especially it's, women, women over the age of... To, to do to, something and not, you know what, it's not just about that, it's not just about, yeah, health is a massive thing, but God, it opens your eyes to so much that you can do. What are you doing now? What You've got to think of what your, your life is like being overweight holds you back doesn't it hold you back you know just as i started stretching years ago like five or six years ago i couldn't believe how inflexible i was and now if i'm in the supermarket and there's something right down on the bottom i can crouch down now as i was a five-year-old and it's amazing i'm nearly Uh, 60 and 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 like you're thinking wow and and you catch yourself thinking hey this is cool (laughs) you know what i mean I mean, so, it, it opens your, it does open your eyes to so much more in life. I do, I, I think that, and people are massively missing out on what, what, what is out there, what there is to see and do, and just yeah. Right, we're going to finish this discussion now. We've not quite got through the list. It's it's, it's amazing how come. We're going to finish this now with a personal story. I hope she doesn't mind us sharing it. A uh, personal story of somebody who's who was maybe we, we should mention name but somebody who who was really close to us who was overweight had always struggled with depression mental health uh, uh basically all of the things that we've just been through on the list and she turned her life around completely in the space of yeah. what, nine months right yeah more it was more, it, she did it over months. she did it over two years two years two the years first, the first tr- the first key was that she discovered that she was actually lactose intolerant yeah but yeah. she started actually before that so that was the second that was the second part so the first part was that she she decided that she needed to do something so that was the first part yeah exactly she she, she was on antidepressants she needed to do something um so she lost two stone in that first first instance, just cutting out bits, snacks and stuff like that. So lowering what she'd eaten before and moving a bit more, she'd started walking a bit more. And then um, she found out she was pregnant, but she didn't use that as an excuse to, oh, I can eat what I want now. She carried on doing what she'd done, walking a bit more through a pregnancy. She had the baby and then she, she found that she was like the baby was lactose intolerant and she was breastfeeding so she then gave up um dairy and she's lost i want to say nine and a half stone nine and a half stone something like that and she's done incredibly well she's running now um just transformed her whole life and um from a mental health point of view she's doing incredibly well um, and she's always suffered with a mental health and used that as an excuse a lot not to lose the weight in the first instance. So, yeah, just she's an inspiration to me. Mm. She really and, is. Yeah. So basically, um, we hope that we've covered some interesting points, maybe from a slightly different perspective. Me and Joanna are on our own mission. I'm really into the diet side of things. Joanne's into the fitness and we work together um, in the Vitality crew. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. And, and there'll be more. We'll, we will be <laughs> doing more. Get better on later ones. Yeah, we'll hopefully get better. But thanks for being with us. Thanks for joining. And uh, I'm going to end this recording now. And uh, if you've not done so, you can subscribe to the channel or comment. Post it. Come on, we've talked about so many things in this video. Yeah, you comment. Can, Let us know how we do it. Tell us can, what you think. Tell, tell us what, us you what think. we can do better. What topics you want us to cover. Or tell is us this, if we've been talking a load of rubbish. Brother. We might end up having a few arguments along the way. This is what happens. Yeah. <laughs> All right, then. So thanks a lot for being with us. Bye-bye. Okay, bye.